Process creates capacity. Like the most important thing in a business, in a small business, in a growing business is your time because it's a finite resource. And so if you have more capacity because doing the work takes less time, that leads to more profitability. More profitability leads to more resources to invest in more people to do more work to scale the business. This is the Agency Profit Podcast. The podcast for agency owners that want to run a more profitable business that doesn't depend on them. Introducing your host, CEO and co-founder of Parakeeto, Marcel Petipal. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Agency Profit Podcast. I've got a real treat for all of you today. A friend of mine from, we keep bringing people in from SAS Academy, but it's because it's a great group of people. Uh, you might have heard of this guy's company. He runs a company called Trainual. It's a leading SaaS company helping fast-growing businesses automate their onboarding and training. Uh, he's on a mission to make small business easier by helping leaders document and de delegate what they do so that they can do more of what they love. He's also the host of a podcast called Process Makes Perfect. He's the author of a book called 100 Hacks to Improve Your Business, and he's a contributor to Inc. Magazine. And he's here today to help us figure out how to build and scale our business through process. With all of that, thank you so much for being here, Mr. Chris Ronzio. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm so thrilled to get into this because like, you know, I'm a process nerd. What we talk about here on the podcast is process. We've got all kinds of nerds listening. And you're like the ultimate process nerd. I mean, you spent a lot of your career either building processes for businesses or building the platform that helps them build their processes. Yeah, it's funny. Every owner, every leader wants a playbook for their business. They want a company that's turnkey, that could scale, that could run itself. So someday you could sell it or you don't have to come into the office every day. And I heard that over and over and over again. But the solution every time was like, Google Docs or a three ring binder operations manual. And so that's that's where the idea for Trainual came from was how do we make something super easy, accessible, anyone can use it, centralized, online, easy to train, easy to track. And that's where Trainual came from. You guys have been one of the fastest growing companies we've seen through come, come through SaaS Academy. It's just been crazy. Um, what's been kind of like the, the biggest insight that you've gotten from watching that many companies come on and, and build processes on your platform? The biggest insight is that process is never the urgent thing in your business. And, you know, like everyone wants it. It's a very aspirational thing, which is why so many people sign up. And so as a company, our biggest challenge is not to, you know, make it slightly easier or add this little feature here. It's to make it almost turnkey automated. You know, like if the playbook wrote itself, everyone would have one. But doing it and putting the time into it when you could be out selling or doing the work or making money, you know, it takes a really conscious, disciplined effort. That's the hardest part about this. I'm so excited to just dig into this because I think there's so much that you can share, so many nerdy insights. So the first thing that I want to ask you is, number one, like we've talked about it. Everybody listening to this understands this, but I think it can never be overstated. Why is process so important? You know, and, and what kind of results have you seen from your own clients that have come in with no process, built out the process and, you know, their business is transformed on the other end? Well, process creates capacity. Like the most important thing in a business, in a small business, in a growing business is your time because it's a finite resource. And so if you have more capacity because doing the work takes less time, that leads to more profitability. More profitability leads to more resources to invest in more people to do more work to scale the business. And so businesses that are growing are on this constant like flywheel where they get work and then they do the work and then they get the work and they do the work. And if you can't get outside of the flywheel by having a process that operates that other people could operate, then you're just stuck with a job. You're doing the job forever. And so no one has a process from day one because you couldn't possibly know what the process is. You know, at the beginning, you're experimenting. When you're offering something for the first time, you're like, I don't know how to do this. Let me figure it out. But then the best business people will look back at that job and say, what worked well? What didn't work well? Let me take the stuff that worked well and apply that to the next job and we fix the stuff that didn't work well and apply that to the next job. And so 
early on in a business, you're doing so much of that where you're changing things that it doesn't really make sense to formalize a process. But once you feel like you're doing things pretty consistently, then the only way to hand them off to someone else is if you write them down and you have instructions and you have expectations. And so process is important once you've got production, once you've got something you've done and you've got some volume coming through your business, process creates capacity. What are the mistakes that you see a lot of folks make when they start going down the path of trying to systemize their business and build processes? Well, a lot of people will build processes prematurely. Like you'll write things down because you're so eager to get rid of them that you abdicate the responsibility. You know, you, you kind of just push an area of the business off onto the new person that you hired without clear instructions because you haven't figured it out yet. And so then you take your eye off the ball, you focus on other things. And then when you look back at what they're doing, you get angry and you're like, ah, I just need to do it myself. And so there's that that behavior of wanting to jump back into a role is because you never really perfected it or you didn't hire a person that was experienced enough to perfect it for you. You know, so so I think the biggest mistake is wasting time doing it too early before you've got a concrete process. Um, you know, I, I trademarked this term, uh, do it, document it, delegate it, because I was saying it all the time in my presentations. And so, you know, the, the it's simple, though, when you when you're in business, everything in the business you learn to do initially. And once you're doing it consistently, you document it. And once you can document it clearly and articulate the steps, then you can delegate it. But what people do is they go from doing it themselves to delegating it without documenting it. Or they go from, doc, you know, they go, uh, they skip doing it consistently and go straight to document it. And then the everything changes and you feel like you wasted all the time writing things down. Like you, I've seen a lot of people do that where we over-engineer the process on the first iteration and then it just doesn't hold up and it ends up being a lot of wasted time or a lot of frustration or a lot of confusion for the team. Uh, and obviously that's not gonna scale. I think there's another problem. Like people, you know, you hear systems and processes and I think people invest in a system before they've got a process. And you know, if you're if you're picking the technology, the software, the tool, and then trying to develop your process, you're you're it's not a, a free whiteboard kind of situation where you can map out the best experience. And so I always recommend start with the process, map things out, and then find the right tool that fits your process. So think of it like like a highway. You know, they don't just build highways or freeways. You know, they don't they don't just like without any planning. They it starts off as you know, maybe it hundred years ago was a path through the woods and then it was a well-traveled path and then it was gravel and then it was a road. And now just because there's so much volume going between point A and B, they needed to create the infrastructure of a highway. That's how you should invest in, in tools and software, um, not the other way around. So with that said, that takes us to kind of the next question, which is what is a great process look like and what are the keys to building a successful process if we're just kind of getting into this now yeah sure so getting tactical nitty gritty i mean a process has to answer all of the questions someone might have about it so when you think about like an instruction manual if you gave someone the instructions to ikea it tells you like here's all of the tools you need right here's here's the hammer and the stuff that came in the box and it's the same with the process you have to tell people um what What's the software that I use for this? What's the URL I go to? What's the password I need to know? What's the, like, what do I need in order to get this done? And then you wanna tell people, set expectations for how long is this gonna take? You know, if I'm doing it right, how long should it take? Do I do it alone or do I need a friend? Just like the two people lifting up a, a table. You know, is anyone else involved in this process? Uh, how frequently do I do this? You know, is this is this something I'm doing on demand? Do I do it every day? Do I do it once a week? So you want to answer all those questions, all those how the, those uh, the the context around the process, and then the core of it is just a step by step sequence. Hey, it's Marcel here, and I just want to take a quick second to thank you for tuning into the show. I hope you're getting so much value out of today's episode, and if you are, then I want to encourage you to head on over to paraketo.com where you can get access to even more great resources to help you run a more profitable agency, like additional episodes of the show, blog posts detailing the things we talk about, as well as lots of free downloadable checklists, spreadsheet templates, and other resources, all designed to help you run a more profitable agency. So with that, hope you enjoy the rest of the episode and I'll let you get back to it. 
I'm curious to know, I'm sure you've seen a lot of processes to build process, which is my favorite process, by the way, the process to build process. Um, what are some of the most ninja tactics that you've seen over the years um, on people, you know, building processes in their business? Hmm. Uh, the first is you could you could document it while you're doing it. So that's kind of a, a ninja hack where, you know, if if you have to do this thing anyway, um, it's only going to it might take you five or 10 percent longer to grab the screenshots and write out the explanation while you do it. Whereas if you're doing it only for the purpose of documentation, you're spending 100 percent of the time wasted towards this effort. You know, we we have new hires audit things for us a lot of times um, because it can be uh, it, it can be confusing if things are outdated or whatever. And when a new hire is going through something, they're going to have more questions than anyone. So they help refine the process by asking good questions. Um, but really it's, it's just about saving time. Like if you can do a screen recording, click a button and talk through something in five minutes that would have taken you 25 minutes to write out, then do a screen recording. Like it, it doesn't have to be beautiful. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It doesn't have to be the 250 page three ring binder with color coded sections that we all like wish we had, <laughs> you know, it, it just has to be easy to find and, uh, and, and easy to access. And so, um, don't strive for perfection, just record things, just, just write things down. The question that I think a lot of people have around this is maybe they spent some time investing in processes, but the team's not really jiving with the process or it's not quite getting followed the way that they want it to. What are some of the keys to actually getting the team bought in and implementing these processes and, and you know, maintaining them over time? Well, if it's not getting followed, then you might have an accountability problem. So a lot of people that put things on like a wiki or an intranet, you know, there's there's no closed loop to say that they've seen it. It's just, it's there, you can look for something, but there's no accountability that you've actually gone through it. So as part of why, why we created our system the way that we did, so that you're grouping things by role in the business, you're assigning them to people, and then as they go through it, it tracks the time and date stamp of the version that they've seen. And if you update something, it makes everybody go through the newest version if that's what you want. And so I think that closing the loop, the accountability is the first thing to solve. Because if someone's been through it, they've been trained and you have the exact day and time that they went through it and they're not doing it right, then you've got something to point back to that you set the correct expectations. And I think most often that's what happens when there's a performance issue. It's because you didn't set the right expectations or the correct instructions. And so if you've solved that problem and that's not it, it's just that they're outdated, then the, the next problem is every process has to have an owner. So every area of your business has someone that is uh, that, that's a, a responsible for it or, or has ownership over it. And if you divide your content up in that way, then you can just make it a simple recurring task for people to review the processes they own on a quarterly basis. Um, but really, like you mentioned, the, the, if your business is existing and thriving and changing, then your processes will always change. And so you don't do this because it's like a one-time project this quarter that you're just checking off your list and now it's done. You really have to have this like playbook culture where you are putting your best practices as they exist today, but then you're encouraging everyone to each time they change something or, or do something a little different, don't forget to update the system. And one of the things I want to call out here is, especially in the agency world, I think we're notorious for engineering our calendars or engineering people's jobs to not leave room for this. But we have to we, ha we have to engineer our, the cadences in the business around understanding that our team is going to need time to go and watch the newest version of the training. We can't just constantly be cracking the whip to say, you got to get billable hours, you got to get billable hours, because that's always going to trump this other stuff. And you're actually not putting them in a position where it's likely that they're going to be able to be successful. Yeah. And I would challenge everyone listening to figure out what what capacity do their people need to be at at their billable rate in order to be profitable for the business? And if if your people have to bill 40 hours a week or 36 hours a week in order for the business to be profitable, you've set up a system that doesn't allow for this. You know, so if you're if you're profitable based on 32 hours a week or whatever it is, then you've got that capacity to to do this kind of stuff. So it's that's kind of a reality check for everyone to say, you know, how, how much do we need to bill? 
Do our, are our systems efficient enough for us to do the work we need to do and get paid what we need to make so we have time for this? Because if you don't have time for this, it'll always get put on the back burner. Um, so last but not least, uh, we've touched on this, but keeping the processes up to date. Obviously, there's a lot of forces inside the business that can help us do this organically. But, you know, what is the, the key? What is the right cadence, really, that we should be trying to bake into the business to make sure that this stuff um, stays relevant and stays current with how we're doing things? Uh, you mentioned earlier a great point that if you're doing it right, your processes probably break every six to 12 months. So the cadence we follow is three to six months. So we talk about our processes quarterly at our leadership meetings and ask if everybody's been through recently. And then it's kind of like if by the next leadership meeting you haven't done an audit, then that, you know, that's the time you're doing it. So three to six month cadence, I think, is is uh, reasonable and it's easy to review, especially if you're hiring people. It's easy to review it before the next person starts, because um, that's that's your chance to fine tune the information or make sure that they're going to get the, the latest up to date information. So so I would say three to six months or more regularly if you're hiring more regularly. Awesome. There you have it very clear and to the point. My last question for you, if there's someone listening to the show that doesn't consider them to themselves to be a very process driven or oriented kind of person, there's a lot of business owners that don't identify as very operations or, or process focused kinds of people. What advice do you have for them when it comes to building these things into their business? I think everyone could benefit from just doing a sticky note exercise to say, how do I do this thing? You know, like you don't need any tech tools. You could just do sticky notes or a whiteboard and map out how you do something and then get other people to look at it. See if you missed any steps. See if there's a, a, one of those particular sticky notes that's a huge problem for the business. Like if someone could, if every employee could come in and with a marker draw a circle around like their the most problematic sticky note, think how beneficial that would be to you as a leader to not be a process person, but to have identified the bottleneck in your own process that you can put resources on and work on in your business. So I think everyone can do that. And if you really feel like you don't want to do this work, you're not the type of person to think through SOPs and things like that. I've found that uh, journalists or teachers or other people that are just great at communicating make amazing interviewers. And you can have someone like that just interview you about your own job or the job that you're hiring someone to do that you want to take off your plate. And they can really quickly assemble the roles and responsibilities and the how to's for that position. So um, you don't have to do all the work. If you're not the process person, just realize it's a crowdsourced effort for everyone to understand what's on their own plate and what they want to move on to someone else's plate. And it's that simple. There you go, folks. If you're listening and you're interested, scroll down. It'll all be in the show notes, direct links. Head on over there. And um, with all of that, Chris, I can't thank you enough for joining us on the show today and dropping some serious knowledge bombs. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Well, that's all for today's episode of the Agency Profit Podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. And Make sure you head on over to parakeeto.com to get access to lots of other great resources to help you run a more profitable agency. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next episode.